Hi everyone, I'm Trish and welcome to my women's online Bible study. Today we're covering Judges chapters 8 and 9, so let's say a short prayer and dive right in. Heavenly Father, please give me clarity to speak and the hearer, the ear to hear. Please impart on us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of all your ways, that we may walk upright before you. Help us to share your word with others in clarity and in its truth. And please help us to remember to put on the armor of God. Those things listed in Ephesians chapter 6, starting in verse 10. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So grab your Bibles and turn with me to Judges 8. I am reading from the New King James Version. Now the men of Ephraim said to him, Why have you done this to us by not calling us when you went to fight with the Midianites? And they reprimanded him sharply. So he said to them, What have I done now in comparison with you? Is not the gleaning of the grapes of Ephraim better than the vintage of Abia, uh, Abizer? God has delivered it. God has delivered into your hands the princes of Midian, Oreb, and Zeb. And what was I able to do in comparison with you? Then their angle anger toward him subsided when he said that when Gideon came to the Jordan he and the 300 men who were with him crossed over exhausted but still in pursuit then he said to the men of Succoth please give loaves of bread to the people who follow me for they are exhausted and I am pursuing pursuing Zeba and Zalmona kings of Midian and the leaders of Succoth, Succoth said are the hands of Zeba and Zalmona now in your hand that we should give bread to your army? So Gideon said, For this cause, when the Lord has delivered Zeba and Zalmona into my hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. Then he, then he went up from there to Penuel and spoke to them in the same way. And the men of Penuel answered him as the men of Succoth, Succoth had answered. So he also spoke to the men of Penuel, saying, When I come back in peace, I will tear down this tower. Now Zeba and Zalmunna were at Karkor, and their armies with them, about 15,000, all who were left of all the army of the people of the east. For 120,000 men who drew the sword had fallen. Then Gideon went up by the road of those who dwell in tents, and on the east of Noba and uh, Jogbia, yeah, <laughs> and he attacked the army while the camp felt secure. When Zeba and Zalmona fled, he pursued them, and he took the two kings of Midian, Zeba and Zalmona, and routed the whole army. Then Gideon, the son of Joash, returned from battle, from the ascent of Heres. And he caught a young man of the men of Succoth and interrogated him. And he wrote down, <clears throat> sorry, and he wrote down for him the leaders of Succoth and his elders, 77 men. Then he came to the men of Succoth and said, Here are Zeba and Zalmona, about whom you ridiculed me, saying, Are the hands of Zeba and Zalmona now in your hand, that we should give bread to your weary men? And he took the elders of the city and thorns of the wilderness and briars, and with them he taught the men of Succoth. Then he tore down the tower of Penuel and killed the men of the city. And he said to Zeba and Zalmona, What kind of men were they whom you killed at Tabor? So they answered, as you are, so were they. Each one resembled the son of a king. Then he said, They were my brothers, the son of my mother. As the Lord lives, if you had let them live, I would not kill you. And he said to Jather, his firstborn, Rise, kill them. But the youth would not draw his sword, and he was, for he was afraid, because he was still a youth. So Zeba and Zalmona said, Rise yourself and kill us. For as a man is, so is, is, for as a man is, so is his strength. <laughs> so Gideon arose and killed Zeba and Zalmunna and took the crescent ornaments that were on their camels next. And the men of Israel said to Gideon, Rule over us, both you and your son, and your grandson also, for you have delivered us from the hand of, the, of Midian. But Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you, nor shall my son rule over you. The Lord shall rule over you. Then Gideon said to them, I would like to make a request of you, that each of you would give me the earrings from his plunder, for they had golden earrings, because they were Ishmaelites. So they answered, we will give, we will gladly give them. And they spread out a garment and each man, man threw into it the earrings from his plunder. Now the weight of the gold earrings that he requested was 1,700 shekels of gold besides the crescent ornament pendants and purple robes, which were on the kings of Midian. And besides the chains that were around their camels necks, the Gideon, then Gideon made it into an ephod and set it up in his city, Orpha. 
And all Israel played the harlot with it there. It became a snare to Gideon and to his house. Thus Midian was subdued before the children of Israel, so that they lifted their heads no more. And the country was quiet for 40 years in the days of Gideon. Then Jerobabel, the son of Joash, went and dwelt in, the house, in his own house. Gideon had 70 sons who were his own offspring, for he had many wives. And his concubine, who was in Shechem, also bore him a son, whose name was... I'm sorry, whose name he called Abimelech. Now Gideon, the son of Joash, died at a good old age and was buried in the tomb of Joash, his father, in Orpha of the Abizarites. So it was as soon as Gideon was dead that the children of Israel again played the harlot with the Baals and made Baal Beareth their god. Thus the children of Israel did not remember the Lord their God who had delivered them from the hands of all their enemies on every side, nor did they show kindness to the house of Jerobabel. Gideon in accordance with the good he had done for Israel. Judges 9. Then Abimelech the son of Jerobabel went to Shechem to his mother's brothers and spoke with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father saying please speak in the hearing of all the men of Shechem which is better for you that all 70 of the sons of Jerobabel reign over you or that one reign over you. Remember that I am your own flesh and bone. And his mother's brother spoke all these words concerning him in the hearing of all the men of Shechem, and their heart was inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said, He is our brother. So they gave him seventy shekels of silver silver from the temple of baal uh, with which Abimelech hired worthless and reckless men, and they followed him. Then he went to his father's house at Orpha and killed his brothers and seventy sons of Jerobabel on one stone. But Jotham, the youngest son of Jerobabel, was left because he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together, all of Beth Milo, and they went and made Abimelech king besides the Terebinth tree at the pillar that was in Shechem. Now when they told Jotham, he went and stood on top of Mount uh, Gezerim and lifted his voice and cried out. And he said to them, listen to me, you son of Shechem, that God may listen to you. The trees once went forth to anoint a king over them. And they said to the olive tree, reign over us. But the olive tree said to them, Should I cease giving my oil, with which they honor God and men, and go to sway over trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, You, come and reign over us. But the fig tree said to them, Should I cease my sweetness and my good fruit, and go to sway over trees? Then the tree said to the vine, You, come and reign over us. But the vine said to them, Should I cease my new wine, with cheers, both God and men, I'm sorry, which cheers both God and men, and go to sway over trees? Then all the trees said to the then all the trees said to the bramble, You come and reign over us. And the bramble said to the trees, If in truth you anoint me as king over you, then come and take shelter in my shade. But if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Now therefore, if you had act if you have acted in truth and sincerity in making Abimelech king, and if you have dwelt well with Jerubabel and his house, and have done to him as he deserves, for my father fought for you risked his life and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. But you have risen up against my father's house this day and killed his 70 sons on one stone and made Abimelech the son of his female servant king over the men of Shechem because he is your brother. If then you have acted in truth and sincerity with Jerubbabel and with his house this day, then rejoice in Abimelech and let him also rejoice in you. But if not, let fire come from Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and Beth and Beth Mil Mi Milo, Milo, <laughs> and let fire come from the men of Shechem and from Beth Milo and devour, I think it's Milo, and devour Abimelech. And Jotham ran away and fled, and he and he went to Beer and dwelt there for fear of Abimelech his brother. After Abimelech had reigned over Israel three years, God sent a spirit of ill will between Abimelech and the men of Shechem. And the men of Shechem dwelt treacherously with Abimelech, that the crime done to the seventy sons of Jerobabel might be settled and their blood be laid on Abimelech their brother who killed them, and on the men of Shechem who aided him in the killing of his brothers. And the men of Shechem, Shechem set men in ambush against him on the tops of the mountains, and they robbed all who passed by them along the way. And it was told Abimelech. Now Gael, the son of Eber, came with his brothers and went over to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. So they went on out into the fields and gathered grapes from their vineyards and tried them and made merry. 
And they went into the house of their God and ate and drank and cursed Abimelech. Then Gael, the son of Eber, said, Who is Abimelech and who is Shechem, that we should serve him? Is he not the son of Jeroboam? And is not Zebel his officer? Serve the men of Hamer, the father of Shechem, but why should we serve him? If only this people were under my authority, then I will remove Abimelech. So he said to Abimelech, increase your army and come out. When Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gael, the son of Ebed, his anger was aroused, and he sent messengers to Abimelech secretly, saying, Take note, Jael, the son of Ebed, and his brothers have come to Shechem, and here they are, fortifying the city against you. Now therefore get up by night, you and the people who are with you, and lie in wait in the field. And it shall be, as soon as the sun is up in the morning, that you shall rise early and rush upon the city. And when he and the people who are with him come out against you, you may then do to them as you find opportunity. So Abimelech and all the people who were with him rose by night and lay in wait against Shechem uh, in four companies. When Gael, the son of Eber, went out and stood in the entrance of the city gate, Abimelech and the people who were with him rose from lying in wait. And when Gael saw the people, he said to Zebul, look, people are coming down from the tops of the mountains. But Zebul said to him, you see the shadows of the mountains as, they, as if they were men. So Gael spoke again and said, see, People are coming down from the center of the land in a company, and another company is coming from the diviner's uh, terebinth tree. And Zebul said to him, "Where indeed is your mouth now? Uh, where indeed is your mouth now, with which you said, Who is Abimelech that we should serve him? <laughs> are not these the people who uh, you despise? Go out, if you will, and fight with them now." So Gael went out, leading the men of Shechem, and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled from him. And many fell wounded uh, to the very entrance of the gate. Then Abimelech dwelt at Arama, and Zebul drove out Gael and his brothers, so that they would not dwell in Shechem. And it came about on that on the next day that the people went out into the field and they told Abimelech. So he took his people, divided them into three companies and lay in wait in the field. And he looked and there were the people coming out of the city and he rose against them and attacked them. Then Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood at the entrance of the gate of the city. And the other two companies rushed upon all who were in the fields and killed them. So Abimelech fought against the city that all that day. He took the city and killed the people who were in it, and he demolished the city and sold and sold it with salt. Now, when all the men of the tower of Shechem heard had heard that, they entered the stronghold of the temple of the god Beareth, and it was told Abimelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech went up to Mount Zalman, he and all the people who were with him. And Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bar, a bar, a bar, a, a bow from the trees and took it and laid it on his shoulders then he said to the people who were with him what what you have seen me do make haste and do as i have done so each of the people likewise cut down uh, his own bow and followed abimelech put them against the stronghold and set the stronghold on fire above them so that all the people of the tower shechem died about a thousand men and women then abimelech abimelech went to uh, thebes uh, and he encamped against Thebes and took it. But there was a strong tower in the city and all the men and women, all the people of the city fled there and shut themselves in. Then they went up to the tower, top of the tower. So Abimelech came as far as the tower and fought against it. And he drew near the door of the tower to burn it with fire. Fire, but a certain woman dropped an upper millstone on Abimelech's head and crushed his skull. Then he called quickly to the young man, his arm, arm, armor bearer, and said to him, Draw your sword and kill me, least me and say of me a woman killed him. So his young men thrust him through and he died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man to his place. Thus God repaid the wickedness of Abimelech, which he had done to his father by killing his 70 brothers and all the evil of the men of Shechem. Uh, God returned on their own heads, and on them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jeroboam. Heavenly Father, bless the reading of your word, and let it fill us up to we're able to eat of it again. Uh, if you're just here for a scripture read-through, thank you for coming to read through scripture with me. I really appreciate it. I hope this means a blessing to you, and I hope to see you again next time. If you're here for more in-depth Bible study, stick around, and we will dive right in. So we pick back up here with um, Gideon. Gideon is now judging the um, Israelites, and he is in the middle of the war with the Midianites. Um, and, uh, of course, uh, 
we've as we have already heard and seen that God showed him in uh, the dream of his enemy <laughs> that they are going to um, overcome them and win this war, which they do. Uh, then that's what's covered in chapter eight. Um, they subdue the Midianites, and then we see the fall of Gideon, uh, where he went wrong with making that he coveted that goal. He didn't want to reign over them. He wanted God to uh, rule over uh, the people. Uh, but he did ask them for all that gold, and that's starting in 8 and 22, um, where he uh, he asked them to give them all of their gold earrings, and he makes this gold ephah, and the ephah is like the breastplate of the high priest, and so he coveted that, um, and uh, Gideon, uh, at 27, 8 and 27, it says, then Gideon made it into an ephod and set it up in the city Orpha and all Israel played the harlot. So he caused the people to play the harlot with other gods there and it became a snare to the house of Midian and then um, the rest of the chapter kind of goes into the death of Midian. Uh, but they did have, the country was quiet for 40 years during the days of Midian. But as we can see in chapter 9, it starts with Abimelech's conspiracy, one of Gideon's son. Gideon was not a man uh, in, in the beginning, as we can see in Genesis, and Jesus also confirms that a man is supposed to be with one wife, uh, and the two become one flesh. But Gideon had several wives, and he ends up fathering 70 sons, and Abimelech takes up a stone and like kills everybody. He just wipes out all his brothers. Um, but I do want to stop in 9 and 4, and I want to read a brief excerpt from my Bible. Um, I use the uh, the Reformation Study Bible, um, and I have the English Standard Versions. I have uh the new king james versions um i have several bibles so because i tear them up because i'm always in the word um <laughs> uh, but uh, um i'm just gonna read the <laughs> well a quote from my bible notes it says um the temple of Baal Beareth paid the wages of those who oppressed Israel under Abimelech. Archaeologists have discovered a temple from the era of Joshua and the judges at Shechem that contained an altar and a huge standing stone. The excavators have identified this cultic structure with the temple of Baal Beareth or El Beareth in Judges 9. So that's pretty cool that um, they found that um, and it, it relates back to this text. Uh, and then, uh, but just picking back up, um, well, Abimelech, uh, Gideon's son, has killed all his brothers, um, and uh, he, he, he is trying to reign. Uh, down in verse 7, we do see a parable. The first time we see a parable in the Old Testament, and we know that Jesus uses his form to speak um, in the New Testament, but there's a parable of the trees um, given here, and then uh, starting in verse 22 uh that's when we start to see the downfall of abimelech he did reign for uh three years over israel and let's pick up here in 23 where it says uh 9 and 23 god sends a spirit of ill will between abimelech and the men of shechem so god's will will be done and that is what we pray because it's it's going to be done um uh, people have evil content, uh, intents on their heart. It just seems like we don't have a lot of answers for a lot of the evil, but we, I, I do know that uh, people have uh, evil on their heart and God will uh, repay. He says that vengeance is mine. And after he says that, he does go on to say, and I will repay. I can't wait till we get to that so I can stop saying it. <laughs> Still going to keep saying it. But um, he sends that ill, that spirit of ill will. And then there's that calamity. And I love when they uh, kind of uh, uh, disagree with each other. Um, uh, who was it? Wait, I'm going to pause it to go so and see. So said, um, uh, verse 37, 9 and 37, it was Gael and uh, Zebel. And uh, he, he, he asked him, he kind of, he's like, oh, where's your, that big, oh, no, 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 it said 38. Zebel says to him, where indeed is your mouth now? Like, you, you had all those things to say. Go out, go. <laughs> you said that you were going to fight, and um, who is Abimelech that we should serve him? And he kind of just ate his words. Um, but uh, uh, Abimelech does go on to, uh, to die at the hands of a woman. And then he asked a servant, um, who, who did he ask to come and thrust him through so that it wouldn't be uh, known that a, a woman killed him? But here we learn, even to this day, and everyone who reads the story about Abimelech knows that it was at the hand 
<laughs> I'm a woman. And um, and it ends the chapter that uh, down in 56 that God uh, did repay the wickedness of Abimelech, uh, which he had done to his father by killing his 70 brothers and all the evil of the men of Shechem. God returned on their own head. So God uh, uh, does um, what goes around, comes around, and it comes around by God. So you send something out at evil, and God will definitely repay you for your evil. You will not get away with it, guaranteed. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. I try not to take the Lord's vengeance from him when somebody does something to me, but it's hard in that moment because you know, you're fired up and upset. Like, why would you do this to me? Uh to turn because you know in the new testament we have to turn the other cheek uh she so the woman drops the abimelech she she crushes his skull his armor bearer so he asks his armor bearer to thrust him through uh uh so that um he wouldn't die but have that uh disgraceful death like sisera at the at the hands of a woman uh but we read it here that is uh indeed the cause of it and he just kind of just he was going to die anyways but <laughs> from that stone uh that's it guys i'm just rambling on about this his death which is um i don't know why i'm doing it so thank you for coming to read through and study scripture with me i really appreciate it i hope it's a means of blessing to you and i hope to see you again next time may the lord bless you and keep you may he make his face to shine upon you and bring you peace both now and forever until next time bye